Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dental associates with employment contract issues. Today, I'm going to talk about what should go into a dental associate termination letter, meaning if a dental associate has decided to leave a practice and they're terminating the contract, what needs to go into that letter? So let's first talk about termination. So the contract can be terminated uh, in a number of ways. One, the term could just end if there's no automatic renewal. And then after that period, the parties haven't decided to renew the contract. The contract just ends and they move on. You don't need a termination letter in that scenario. Two, if the parties mutually agree to end the contract for whatever reason, that scenario, you would not need a termination letter. Um, there are two scenarios where you would need a termination letter either with cause termination or without cause termination. So with cause termination would mean one of the parties is in breach of contract. And so from the dental associates perspective, let's say the employer um, agreed to pay a bonus and they're refusing to pay it for whatever reason. So the dental associate would send them a letter that states you are in breach of contract due to this. And then there usually would be what's called a cure period where uh, somewhere between 15 to 30 days where the party uh, has, uh, you know, an opportunity to, to cure the breach, so to fix whatever the problem is. And then if in this scenario, if the employer ultimately pays the bonus, then the dental associate couldn't terminate the contract without cause, I'm oh, excuse me, for cause. Now, without cause termination is the vast majority of terminations, probably nine times out of 10, it's due to without cause termination. And that means either party can terminate the agreement at any time with a certain amount of notice to the other party. Most of the time, it's somewhere between 30 to 90 days. So let's say dental associates at a practice and maybe they have a better opportunity somewhere else, then they look into the termination section of their contract and then it's gonna say, you must provide 60 days notice a written notice in order to terminate the agreement. You would then have to work out those 60 days and then at the end of the 60 days, you could move on. So in this scenario, you would have to write a letter and then provide that to the employer. And then at the end of that notice period, you could move on. So let's talk about the details of a termination letter. So uh, in any contract, there's going to be a section that just called, it's called notices or notice. And then in that section, it's going to state how a party can give proper notice to the other party. Meaning, for you to provide effective notice, you need to either hand deliver it, send it certified mail, uh, you know, fax, email, whatever. It has to be a written letter that states I'm terminating the contract. So you first, you need to look in that notices section and see exactly how you can give effective notice. If you don't give effective notice, so if you just verbally tell the owner usually sending an email is not considered effective, then theoretically the owner could make you wait longer until you actually terminate it properly. Um, so in this case, if you have to send the letter, you figured out how to send it via certified mail, what needs to go in the letter? The letter of terminating a contract without cause is not a time to air grievances. I know when I speak to Dennis, all the time, they're unhappy. They want to put down all of the reasons why they're unhappy, all the reasons why the employer is terrible at business and they've treated them unfairly. They just want to unburden their the problems. Don't do that. Uh, I know it probably would feel good to do that. There is zero benefit to the dentist from doing that. You need to simply put... I am terminating the agreement via this section. I'm required to give 60 days notice. Here is my notice. My last day of work will be this date. Thank you for the opportunity. Signed, Dr. Dentist. Uh, that's it. Short and sweet. I'm terminating the agreement per for this section. Thank you for the opportunity. Last day of work. Nothing else. Uh, if you were to write a two page airing of grievances, uh, you, you obviously are gonna burn a bridge to that employer, but 
uh, word simply could get out that, you know, there was major problems and you could be labeled as some kind of malcontent. Um, whereas if you just keep it short and sweet, don't get into all of the problems, none of that's going to follow you into a new job. So I understand it may feel good. Don't do it. Just keep it short and sweet, send it to the employer and then move on. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon for a new employer to call your last employer. And if you had that scenario happen and you just blasted them in this letter, the that employer is obviously not going to give you a great recommendation. Whereas if you just say, I'm moving on, thank you. There's not a lot negative that they could say unless there was some kind of major friction while you were there. But it, it just doesn't make sense. So uh, you obviously can't terminate the contract without cause. It has to be via written letter. And um, don't kind of uh, you know mess up your future by burning a bridge with the old employer. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, you can always call us at the phone number listed below in the description. Uh, or you can reach us uh, through our website, ShellyLaw.com, C-H-E-L-L-E. Law.com, and I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.